Is it too early to get started with a little holiday prep? Thanksgiving's coming, Christmas is right behind it. Let's get ready. Hey folks, it's Darcy from the PurposefulPantry.com. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for stopping by today. We're gonna to be doing breadcrumbs from everyday breads that you might get from the grocery store all the time. You can use home breads that you make at home. Uh, you can use hot dog buns. You can use whatever. Um, this it, this loaf runs from a dollar to two dollars a loaf. That I got them on clearance for fifty cents, so I grabbed a couple, came home and made some of this. I made bread seasoned bread crumbs. I made it for fine bread crumbs. I made it to use croutons for our salads. So these are things that you can make to have these in the pantry that you can use anytime, but they're particularly great to have already on hand when you're starting your holiday baking. So let's get started. Okay, to get ready for the holidays, uh, you can always do something like this. I found some clearance white bread uh, at my local grocery store. So if I find clearance bread like this, I will grab it and I will dehydrate it. And I don't have any right now, so I need to stock up. So I can make croutons, I can make bread crumbs, uh, and I can make bread cubes that you might use in, in stuffing mix. So I'm gonna walk through the three of those, how I do it. You can, you know, there are many ways that you can do it, uh, but these are just the ones I'm gonna do. But something I'm gonna help out a little bit for the croutons is, is that also this week, I found some clearance um, herbs. So basically what it was called was a roasting blend, which is basically thyme, parsley, and rosemary. But what I can also do is I'm going to add a little bit of my leftover sage from last year's batch and get rid of it. So these are just bits of rosemary um, and thyme that I'm going to just sit here and strip. I'm not going to make you walk through any of it, um, but this is how I dry it because I can't hang it in my house uh, effectively, so I just choose to go ahead and dry it. Okay, here is what I've got left. This is probably a cup and a half of, of uh, dried herbs. I'm gonna go ahead and toss in my sage because that's the last of my last year's stock. And I'm gonna put in a little garlic powder because that's how we roll, okay? And what I could do is uh, just grind this up in my coffee grinder or my Vitamix. Uh, I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna go ahead and just do this by hand because it's just as easy to do it that way for me, right? I do wanna make sure I do this uh, pretty fine for all the rosemary bits because they can be a little hard. Um, so what this was, was it's, it's a roasting blend that I got from my grocery store. When you go into the produce section and they have fresh herbs and those little plastic containers that are about that big, these were all clearanced because they weren't getting purchased. So of course, I grabbed them. Okay, so what I can do is that when I make croutons, I can just sprinkle some of this in the bowl with the croutons, which is what I'll do. Also, when I make the bread crumbs, I can put this in with the crumbs as I start to grind them up, and that way it's all incorporated. Or, you know, I can just put this in a jar and save it, and when I make, when I go through to use the bread crumbs and whatever I'm gonna do, and I want to season them, like if I'm gonna use them as a topping, I can just add some of the seasoning to the bread crumbs at that point, which is what I tend to do because that way I can use the breadcrumbs for whatever I want to use them for. They don't have to be seasoned in case they don't work in that particular application as being a seasoned breadcrumb. So then what I have are these two loaves of very, very commercial white bread. It's just, you know, French, it's not even French loaf. It's just big, uh, big white bread. So what I'll do is I'll just start cutting um, you have choices. You can make cubes or you can just do slices, depending on what your final outcome is to be. If I'm gonna make bread crumbs, I just make some really, really thin slices. I don't bother cubing it up for crumbs because there's no point in um, that much extra work for something that I'm gonna just turn around and, and, and make into a crumb. It doesn't matter to me at all. So I'll do one of these this way so that you can just see how I'm just cutting it up into small slices. Now you're going to ask why don't I just throw this in the oven because it's going to be faster. It, it would be faster but if you're looking at this as getting near Christmas time or Thanksgiving season and you're wanting to get ahead of the game you can make all your breadcrumbs ahead of time and you can also still have things going in the oven that are ready to go. So you're not tying up your oven with things that um, with something like this when you could be baking pies ahead of time. Excuse me. All right, so all we're gonna do is just lay these out on our tray.
Now if I want cubes, I'm going to go with one quarter inch. And then for each of these, I'm just going to cut basic cubes. So that what I'll have are croutons or bread stuffing for however you'd like to make your stuffing. Now, if you want big chunks for stuffing, if that's how you prefer it, then you know, cut these as big as you want. This is not gonna be as picky as doing um, you know, fruits or vegetables because you're not worried about issues with food preservation this way. Um, this is just not fussy. It doesn't have to be anything certain. And you can see this is pretty crumbly because it is like, you know, a couple of days old bread that's been sitting in the refrigerator. So what I'm gonna do is I can also collect all these crumbs and then put them in their own little flat tray uh, and dry them like they are and get a head start on the crumbs. So let me get finished with this. Okay, so for basic croutons, I'm just gonna throw some of these in a bowl, just like this. Something about doing croutons is if you use oil, you don't want to think about storing these for long term um, because oil can turn rancid over time. I don't know if you've ever bought commercial ones um, and then opened a bag and then noticed that they just stink when you buy commercial croutons that you left in the bags for too long. Um, that's what happens, is that stink is the oils turning rancid. It's oxidation of the oil. So what I do is I just do smaller amounts. I don't do a lot at one time if I'm gonna do seasoning. So you can do a little drizzle of butter, you can do whatever kind of oil that you would like to do, but I lightly spray all of my bread. And I'm using an avocado spray. And in most cases, if I'm doing this for immediate, like if I'm gonna have it for dinner tonight, I will throw this in the oven. <clears throat> but if I'm just trying to get like have some to store up for like the next couple of weeks then I'll do a bigger batch throw them in the dehydrator and just let it go so I'm just gonna take some of my herbs and just kind of sprinkle them in there and just toss it around and because this is really uh, really 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 day old bread um, it is going to crumble up a lot um, it's the it's the way this bread is made so I'm not too worried about that Okay, I'm gonna put this on some trays. And the only reason I'm using fruit leather on these, fruit leather sheets on these, is because uh, the, the the crumbs. I know this is going to be a pretty crummy, uh, a pretty crummy uh, crouton, so I'm just going to let this sit this way. And then I'm going to put this into a 150 degree dehydrator because we're not trying to worry about saving any kind of uh, nutrition with this because that's not what we make these for. So I want to put it. I don't want to run it at the full temperature, I'm just going to run it pretty hot. Now, if I was a better baker, I would make my own bread, then I would do my own uh, croutons, and I wouldn't have this same problem. Um, or if I bought really good bread, uh, and did it immediately instead of letting it get on its own uh, be stale and crumbly that would be an option too but when I find the sale on that kind of bread I can't make it that way I can't make it that inexpensively uh, and I know that you may have different concerns about your dietary needs just work with whatever works for your diet so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna take about this much more of this to make some more uh, bread cubes because I don't really use them much I don't do a lot of stuffing that way uh, but you can also do these in very small pieces and do your own like uh, stovetop stuffing mix. Um, you could try that because that will work really well. So, uh, and I'll pop some um, 
information down in the description box below that will give you um, all of the directions on how to do this and I'll link some homemade stovetop stuffing recipes in there so that you can make your own breadcrumbs uh, in order to do the stovetop. Okay, so we're going to do this and then the rest of these are just going to go to crumbs because I find I use those way more than I do cubes. So let me finish this up and we'll get to the drying. So what I have here is a tray of the breadcrumbs that were on my cutting board and I just threw them all in there. Um, they will crumb up just as well as everything else. The thing to remember is if you're putting powder, crumbs, herbs, not on the stem, is that you do not want to turn on your machine uh, until the door is completely closed. You also don't want to open the door until that fan that's in your machine has stopped running completely. That way you don't have all the blowback. So I have a tray down here on the bottom, that this white tray. It is the fruit leather tray that Kasori comes with. I don't like it for actually doing fruit leathers, but I'll keep it down there to catch crumbs as they fall when this is drying. I'm gonna set this at 150. The time really, I mean the temperature really doesn't matter. Um, I'm just gonna get it set up kind of high. And then we're gonna start in just a second. The thing I wanted to remind you of is that you can do these with any kind of bread that you have. Homemade bread, sandwich bread, hot dog buns, brioche, just whatever you have, use it. Because breadcrumbs and croutons have great flavor on their own depending on the kind of bread that you use. So if you're not a bread maker yourself, whatever you buy at the store will work. All right, here we go, we're just gonna get started. But first, close the door. These should take about three to six hours. All right, so I wanted you to see what these look like when they came out of the dehydrator. This only actually took, you know, less than an hour because this bread was already pretty stale. It's a very loose, um, wide, I don't know how you talk, bread terms, I don't know what this is, but the it's not a very dense bread. So I just wanted you to know that you can do this with anything, but know that the quality of what comes out at the end is gonna be what quality goes inside when you start dehydrating, just like with any fruit or vegetable. So know that um, if you want really good, hard, dense croutons, you're gonna to wanna to use better breads. Uh, but for what I'm gonna be using this for, this is perfect, okay? So I'm gonna take these, and they're just gonna go into my food processor because I'm gonna do a quick pulse. I'm gonna do some really kind of, um, oh, I need to put the thing in first, Archie. Come on, pay attention. Um, I don't know if you can see this, if I can do it easily. I'm gonna just do it right here on my hand. See, this is how easy these break up into small cubes and crumbs. I mean, not small cubes, but small bits. So this would take nothing for me just to do this by hand. Uh, but I am gonna show you a quick food processor run so that you can see how it works this way. Hopefully you can still see the machine. Yeah, you can make it, you just lift it up. All right, there we go. So this is not gonna be something that you're gonna to wanna to make flour out of. Uh, breadcrumbs, usually depending on what the recipe that you need, you either need some just you know rough breadcrumbs or sometimes you need really fine breadcrumbs. Uh, but I wouldn't go all out on this and try to make flour out of it again because it doesn't need that. So we're just gonna quickly pulse. you're already seeing where I've got some really fine grains and some bigger ones. Now, something I forgot, that if you want to make this into seasoned breadcrumbs, you remember this from the other day, I meant from the other day, well it was the other day for me when I started this. Um, these seasonings are something that you can just add right into it. However many you want, it doesn't really matter. I don't want to put that in upside down, Darcy, because you weren't paying attention. Here we go. Okay, depending on your need for uh, crumbs, this is what we've got. So we've got some larger crumbs on the top and then at the bottom you can see these are really fine grain. Okay, so these are seasoned, uh, lightly seasoned. What I would do if it was me, I actually would uh, just leave these as they are plain and then add my seasoning to the mix. 
uh, as I'm doing this instead of trying to season this because what will happen, especially if you try to add seasoning without blending it together, the seasoning, if the seasoning bits are larger, they're gonna drop to the bottom and not work well. So what you do with this is that you just pour this into an airtight container. So here are my rough um, breadcrumbs. Now what I use this mostly for is meatloaf uh, and sometimes uh, breading on top of like to do a, a breading for chicken or something. Um, I can use it for that. Now I can make this even more, more uh, consolidated by grinding it a little bit more to have smaller pieces. But for me, I don't need it any more than that. But this is just perfect for my needs for what I do. But you can definitely make this a little smaller if you'd like. So now I'm gonna show you the bread cubes um, for croutons. So these are seasoned. Uh, the seasoning is not going to stick to them tremendously like you would if you had like covered them in a lot of oil and, and then put them in the oven. And if you're wanting something that is more of a texture of what the oven would do, like uh, actually baking this and you have a darker bread, um, you'll want to do this in the oven. Now it still doesn't take very long. It's only a few minutes. Um, so it's not as if that you're saving so much time with your dehydrator, but you may want to save your oven, especially if you're doing this right at the holiday season when you need things just going through your oven all the time. You might want to use your dehydrator as a way to save that oven space. So these are croutons that we will then put into a jar. Um, ready to go. I'm going to put these in a bowl for right now just to show you something. So with the crumbs that happen from managing them, blending them in the bowl and the crumbs that came out because like I said this was pretty crummy bread and what I can do with this also is break it up by hand because it will break down pretty easily just like that it really doesn't take much then this also can go into breadcrumbs. So now what we're going to do is just some plain crumbs. Uh, something I want to mention, the introduction to oil in any of this is going to make it so that your storage is a little less uh, long in your pantry. Um, these breadcrumbs are here with the croutons that I made. I wouldn't expect to let, have these last more than a month or two, okay, because they will go rancid relatively quickly because of the oils that you place in this kind of, in this kind of bread. Um, these will be used up in the next week or two with salad, so they're going to be gone pretty fast. Uh, plain breadcrumbs will last you probably six to nine months uh, for the most part. I mean, you're going to get varying times about how long any of this lasts in your pantry because it's based off the oils and fats that are in your bread, the humidity in your home when you're doing all of this, um, the way that you store in your jars, if you store with a lot of space or a little space. I mean, there's just so many variables about how long this bread will last as a breadcrumb in your pantry. Just know that. Um, bread crumbs are one of those things that you're going to want to rotate through um, more quickly that you don't want to necessarily put these away for long-term storage um, and then just do them as you need them. You can make them any time of the year um, and then have them ready for your holidays or any time that you need them. So we're going to make another batch of just really fine textured crumbs. And so there you go, something a little finer. So you've got really fine breadcrumbs here um, with a few bigger ones on the top. You can go ahead and grind this more if you'd like. Now about one half cup of breadcrumbs uh, equals, um, one half cup of dried breadcrumbs equals about uh, a cup of fresh ones. So that way you know that if you're trying to put fresh breadcrumbs into something, uh, that that's the equivalent of what this would be. So let me get started on the rest of this and I'll show you storage. Okay, so for close up, Croutons, rough bread crumbs cubes. These are small. These are the seasoned ones. This is fine bread crumbs that are non-seasoned that I can use for anything. And then this is just the seasoning mix that I made from all those uh, things that I did. Okay, so this stores six to nine months. This I wouldn't give more than a month or two at the most because it's probably gonna go bad pretty quickly. So you wanna eat the croutons faster. Uh, if you do uh, unflavored croutons that you just do the bread cubes that you might wanna use for stuffing or for, um, for croutons that you can flavor later, 
um, you can give those much longer because you didn't add the oil to it. The oil is the factor in this. So I hope you enjoyed this. It's a quick, easy thing that you can do to use leftover breads to make things for your pantry that you use every day. If you'd like to see some more dehydrating, click this link here. I'll see you again next week. Happy dehydrating.